everyone, this is Indy, and today we're going through the Wall of Eternity on the PTR, and we'll go through the entire instance, bosses also trash, just explaining things along the way. Now it's worth noting here that if you wanted to put this in a perfect timeline, it would come after the Dragon Soul and before the Hour of Twilight. Now that this dungeon's available for play on the PTR, I wanted to go through and give you guys a look inside the instance and at some of these new bosses. Now you'll notice right away that you're a night elf, and I guess that's one downside to the instance unless you particularly enjoy being a night elf. But as with all the new instances, they all have a story behind them, so there's a perfectly good reason for this. After the first trash mob, and as you approach the steps here, you're going to hear someone speaking to you. In the shadows. Hide in shadows. And you will soon become stealthed like and find Illidan, and he is going to help you navigate your way through all of these demons that are just flooding towards the portal. I've seen a single guardian demon slaughter a hundred. Eh? I will hold them back so we can get past. Be ready. Now because Illidan happens to be one of my favorite baddies in the game, even though he wasn't always a bad guy, I decided to leave a lot of these clips in where he's actually helping you through the instance. <laughs> my magic is fading. I'm going through. Waiting to attack. Now the objective here is there are several groups that are guarding these crystals and you're going to have to destroy them all before you proceed to the next area as you're not going to be able to interrupt the parade of demons without destroying them all. And the last group of crystals that you'll need to destroy is right behind this guy. Let us shut down this final portal and finish this. Destroy the crystal so we can move on. We're leaving. Stay close. The demons should all be leaving. We will be at the palace in no time. The demons are no longer pouring from the palace. To meet the first boss of this instance, you're going to just need to walk straight forward into the intersection here as the demons are marching through. Now it looks a little glitchy here. There's a couple of them just kind of stuck on top of each other, but it eventually turns into what is the first boss. This is Parathorn, and according to the information that's currently available for him, he has three phases, combat, transition, and hunting. Now I'll be honest, I didn't read anything up on any of these bosses before going in here, and I'm sure my party members didn't either. Uh, we were able to down him pretty easily, and he moves through the phases very quickly. Now I don't know every single ability he does, but it's obvious you don't want to stand in any of those ground debuffs, and the transition here is supposed to be when he drains life on the entire group. This just needs to be healed up ASAP as soon as you're done being stunned. Now the end of this fight takes place where every player becomes shadow cloaked, the boss fades away, and you basically don't want to be standing where we are. Um, a big legion portal will spawn here and a lot of eyes will come out of it. You really don't want to be standing anywhere near them, the objective is to not be detected and the boss would then come out and be unable to act and take 25% more damage as he will be weakened if you succeed at this. If anyone is detected, he'll ambush the player, effectively coming out of his stealth, and he will likely kill that player unless the tank taunts him off quickly. Now either way, this is the end of the fight, so all you have to do is DPS him down and collect your loot.
hunter became the prey. You did well, but for now I must continue alone. Good hunting. Now at this point in the instance, you're going to have to move forward without Illidan's help and continue on down Ashara's palace. Now I wanted to just briefly show you just how short a distance it is from boss to boss. So what I did was fast forward this part of the clip where we're working our way down towards the next boss, but it is a very short distance. However, the trash mobs in between pose a little bit more of a challenge, so it takes a couple minutes to get there. At the end of the short pathway, you're going to face the second boss, Queen Ashara. Now, the first time we came in, we thought we were going to just be attacking her directly. Um, we ended up wiping on that attempt, and we had to come back through. It's really her servants that you're going to be fighting, and in essence become the boss fight. Now, she will release them two at a time, and they will be attacking your group with different schools of magic. Now, once you've defeated all six of these, you essentially win the fight, but there's a couple of things in between that I should make note of. Now, these Magi have three different schools of magic, Frost, Fire, and Holy, all of them dealing a significant amount of damage to your group. There is one thing I should make note of here. She's going to be casting a spell, and if not interrupted, it will certainly wipe your group. It's called Total Obedience. You'll see a message come up on the screen to interrupt her. If you don't get to it in time, she'll make everybody a puppet, and this is what happens if you don't interrupt. Total Obedience means every player in your party becomes her puppet, and that equals automatic wipe. Now, if one player were to become a puppet, you can DPS the strings to release them from her control. Okay, back onto the fight. If you're dealing with a frost edge, you're going to be dealing with things like Ice Fling, which deals 25,000 frost damage to a random party member. Cold Flame deals 45,000 frost damage in a line, and don't stand in this because it'll also deal 45,000 damage every one second. Blades of Ice charges an enemy. Now the Fire Mages will deal Fireball damage for 25,000 fire damage randomly. Fire Bombs will inflict 35,000 fire damage to the target, their surrounding allies, and slow movement speed. And the Blast Wave, which deals 30,000 fire damage to anyone nearby. Now if your ad is casting Holy, you're going to be seeing Dance of Divinity, which deals light periodic damage to all surrounding players and then the Hammer of Reckoning, which will deal 75,000 holy damage and reduce movement speed. I can't cast. Once this fight is complete, you'll get a chest to loot, and then it will be followed by some RP, so I will let you guys see what happens after, right now. At your side, my queen. We have been sent by Nor's Dormer. Quickly, on our backs. We must get you to the Dragon Soul. Sister, look! The artifact is surrounded by an aura of darkness. The Aspex! Have you done? You have doomed us all to the it madness is. of the old gods. He is lost to us, sister. 
seems Nelthorian no longer. The power of the soul is tearing him apart. I will not be denied. The link to the portal must be broken! Quickly, to Stormrage! This is the shores of the well, and this is where you're going to meet up with the NPCs for the final fight of this instance. Now one thing I should note is you're a very short distance away from the first boss. Illidan's going to shortly buff himself with fire resistance. If you're within proximity to him, you will also receive this fire resist buff. So it's a good idea to stay within his proximity at all times, just to be safe. Now this is Manoroth and Varathan, and at the beginning of the fight, Illidan tells you to take care of the captain while he goes to get Manoroth. Um, the captain goes down pretty quickly and easily, however you're going to be dealing with a few abilities from Manoroth while this goes on. As you cast Spell Firestorm, if you're anywhere outside of Illidan's fire buff, um, you're going to take significant damage. If you need to be farther away from the group, then just run around like it was Argoloth and BH. Now I know I probably could have just stood in the group, but we died on this the first attempt because we didn't realize that Illidan was giving us a proximity buff, and so I just um, stayed away. I, I still didn't realize that I needed to be that close in the group, but at some point in the fight here I do move forward. But if you can avoid the fell firestorm, um, you know, it's really no reason you couldn't just run around. Nothing else happens out here. Once the captain dies, his sword falls to the ground, and what's going to happen is Illidan will pick it up and stab the demon with it, and then he'll tell you that it's time to take him down. Once this happens, your group is going to start DPSing him down while the adds start pouring in. You'll get assistance from another NPC at this point in time. About here is where I realized that as he's casting Blast Wave, I'm the only one taking damage because I'm just a wee bit too far away from Illidan. Once I move in and gain the buff, you'll see that I'm really not taking any damage, nor is anyone else. This part of the fight is pretty easy provided everyone is within the fire resist buff. And as you'll notice, adds start to pour in, and you'll have to deal with those as well. It doesn't really get too bad until right near the end when the ads start overcoming the group, um, but you're always going to have the help of the NPC if you don't have to worry about that. Now the fight for us was over at about 2% when Manoroth becomes incapacitated here. You'll see a few things play out. I watched Illidan because I was really interested in his storyline. And there's the Illidan we know. Well guys, thanks for joining me on my first run through Well of Eternity here on the PTR. As always, information from the PTR can change before things go live, so keep that in mind if you're watching this at a later date. Until next time, this has been Indy with TGN. Thanks for watching.